guys. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we decided to start this podcast basically just talking with each other like we're getting some deep conversation, like we should start a podcast or this would be a great podcast idea. So here we are. I mean, we're, we're going to talk about a bunch of different stuff. We really don't have a, uh, a set topic, especially for this first one. We just kind of wanted to get things started, kind of introduce ourselves. I think a lot of people know who we are. Uh, name's Eddie. This is my wife, Amanda. The queen of the castle. The queen of the castle. Yeah, she is the she is the queen. <laughs> so why, why are we doing this? Like, what's... Um, what are the big, some, some key points for this? I think the main reason why we wanted to do this was because we wanted to kind of get to people on a more personal level, right? personal level. Mm-hmm. We want to talk about real things. So like, you know, marriage, blended families, kids, um, you know, just everything in life that people don't want to talk about. Right. I think you and I are pretty transparent people. And, um, which I think is pros and cons kind of like throw it out there. I, th- I think it's good actually. Like throw it out there. You can't get caught in a lie and it's just who you are. Like right. to try not, don't try to be someone else, be yourself, be real. Yeah. And I, I think there's a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of that happening in the world today. We can see it no. all over media. Right. Um, I, I've been guilty about setting up props for pictures. Oh, really? Like what? <laughs> do you have an example? Do I have any? I don't know. You can probably go through my Instagram and freaking find out. Yeah. No, I think that, you know, people, I think there's a lot of people out there that are kind of like thinking the things that we think they just don't say it. And so for whatever reason, I've always felt like for me, like my calling is to be transparent with people to tell my story. So people don't feel alone. So people feel like they can relate. And, you know, I don't know. You look so freaking hot. Like, I just want to, <laughs> she, she's so hot. Like I, she'll, she'll talk, you'll talk a lot of times. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you're not listening. I know. I'm so sorry. I got to so work on You that. don't listen to me. I, I listen to you. Mm-hmm. I just kind of get lost in the beauty there. Mm-hmm. Is it the new boots? That's a good thing. It's definitely your face. Okay. Your body's nice too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. So, so <laughs> yeah, we, we, do, thing. we all- <laughs> see, there we go. We do we, that a lot. We talk. We say the, At same, the thing same time all the time, say the same things and, so and we give each other the look with a little head back and all that stuff. And I've got the Amazon rainforest behind me. So <laughs> that's always good. <laughs> oh my God. So like background of yourself, just like a brief, I know, I know your background, obviously. I'm sure there's some stuff I probably don't know. Nah. No, no, I think, I think so. I've been pretty transparent with you. We've been together. What? Three years now? Three ish years. I don't know. Maybe. Two Is it half, three? Yeah. Something like that. Uh, we just got married only a few months ago. We're, we just did a justice of the peace. Then we're going to do our ceremony next October, which we're super excited about. So we've been planning that and, uh, have a, have a good wedding with close friends and family, but just let the audience know kind of a little bit of your background and I'll do the same. Or do you want me to go first? Or? Well, I had a quick question for you, honey. Sure. So, you know, you're always a guest on other people's podcasts. So right. How does it feel? Being in the hot seat in your own house. Uh, I wouldn't say hot seat. I'm kind of treating it that I'm your guest. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you said you'd be in the hot seat. All right. If well, you're it's my, not that if hot. You're... I'll stop. How does it feel? It feels good because you can kind of control the conversation. Uh, it is, I will say it's with the five minutes that we've been doing this, it's a little bit easier when someone's asking you the questions. Yeah, totally. Instead of trying to come up with material, but I don't think we're really coming up with material. We're just kind of talking going like with we it. always do. Exactly. Yeah. So. So background for me, mm-hmm. as you know, besides you being beautiful, like what else? Mm. Um, what's my background? I um, have two kids that I brought into this family with you. Um, I am which are they're nine. Oh no, she, she, she just, just turned ten. She just turned ten. Got She's ten, side. double digits, ten, and, and an almost seven-year-old. Yep. So, um, and and I'm a gym rat. Just so everyone knows, love the gym. I'm always in the gym. Um, and what else about me? That's really what sums it up is why, I have kids uh, and I you, like the gym. Why were you wearing tape on your fingers today? Well, so here's the deal is, um, <laughs> no, I wanted to try boxing Yeah, because and? I'm tired of the, I'm tired of the gym. Right. I'm tired of going to the gym because it's the same old thing every day you pull into the parking lot. You you go inside and you get yelled at for something whenever you go in there, right? Right. And okay. always rules. Yeah, and it's just the same workout. It's just like the monotony of it is just I'm done with it. Mm-hmm. And so you were actually it's your fault because since you started the Muay Thai and the Jiu Jitsu and all that, I've been secretly wanting to do it. I just haven't taken the step. Which is awesome. 
this girl is a natural, like no kidding, not joking, just because she's my wife. Like she's really good. Like she does a lot of the basic stuff that minus the breathing part, like I can't know, snapping back to punches it. to block her face. Uh, she, you, you do a freaking phenomenal job. I mean, Jose was even like our, our coach. He was like, uh, what's going on here? I mean, by far your first session looked way better than I did probably my first like five sessions. No joke. And I've had training back a long time ago when I was in the service. Well, when we get really good at this whole podcast thing, I feel like we should put like a clip of me. Oh, my first we will. session. We definitely will. So everyone can know. It's, it's saved. It's saved. How awesome I am. But she's doing boxing, which is the sexiest thing in the world to watch. It's freaking awesome. But yeah, I mean, I, I completely bruised up my hands and pretty much like micro fractured my knuckle. So, mm -hmm. so there's that. So that's why I was wearing tape. Cool. Mm -hmm. So two kids, two kids, gym rat, married, married to this guy. the king of the castle, you. Mm. And I mean, that's really, that's really about it. What's your story? Not that everyone doesn't already know. I've got brought in three kids of this marriage. We have a total of five, but three live with us now, which, and then we have three dogs. We have mm -hmm. a Dutch shepherd and two Shepherd lab mixes, and we just ha we just got a puppy. We're crazy. Probably like what a month after we all moved in together. Yep. A month after, which is not the smart thing. You're just trying. You're trying to adjust, right? And we're like, oh, we need a puppy because we promised the kids. We said we we're gonna get a puppy regardless, <laughs> regardless. So we're building a house eventually, and so we're like, well, we need to get the puppy now because we don't want like our new house to get messed up. He can tear up this one. He can tear this one up. Right. And so I think in our minds, it made sense. And then when we, when we did it, it did not make much sense. You mean like the getting up at yeah. two in the morning? Doesn't make sense. Three in the morning, four in the morning. Doesn't make sense. If we wanted that, bath, we could have had a bath. kid. He peed on himself every freaking morning. Every day. Every morning. Yeah. Ugh, the dogs know. had he's probably more bass than we've had. Probably. But he's good now. He's what, five, six months now? He's six months. Yeah. Little sixer, and he's a little precious he's little so baby. Yeah, perfect. he is perfect. He's a good boy. This is me. But yeah, that history. was probably not a smart move. But I think now, now that that's like behind us, we can work on not ever doing that again. We'll never do it again. Mm. Never say never. Never ever say never. Never ever say never. <laughs> okay, so go ahead. What what else about you, babe? Well, I bring in probably which a lot of military guys will. uh and their and their spouses will agree with this. A lot of baggage, and not like baggage, but like emotional baggage. Yep. So I did twenty years in the military, four with the Marine Corps, sixteen with the Navy, uh, with with those all with the, with the SEAL teams. Uh, and we met after I retired, probably two years, three years after I retired, we met, mm -hmm. and then so yeah, I'm going through a lot of stuff. You're going, the, you're doing it with me. So that that plays that the reason I bring that up because it plays into the blended family for sure. Like you're blending Absolutely. families, but then you're taking in a guy that's pretty much didn't have a lot of things figured out, which a lot of us don't have it figured out. But I think there's some added stresses for sure that that come with that uh, career choice. Um, so it it makes for interesting, which we'll we'll, we'll get into all these things uh, definitely later. We wanted to keep it kind of light, but we're we, we're, we're gonna we're gonna today. dive in. Yeah, we're definitely gonna dive in on that. Uh, but three kids, one twenty two. She has a uh, a son, so the cutest a, grandbaby ever. She's a grandma. I'm a grandpa. So weird. And then we have a seventy year old daughter, and she's we have, eighteen. Is she? 18? Oh gosh, she's 18. man, I'm like all I'm like I suck. There's so many of them to remember, and that well, they just turned. So so it's kind of a big deal yeah. about eighteen or whatever. And then we have a nine year old. He's nine, right? Just kidding. 12. Oh my God. I'm all discombobulated with those so many freaking. Okay, so people. 22, 18, 18, 12, 12, 10, and six. six. About to be seven. Right. There we go. All right. 12 year old boy. And they all, the, the youngest three live with us. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a, it's a full house. Definitely a full house. Not to be confused with the show. That was actually pretty good back in the it's day. It was a great show. It was a great show. What's like your biggest, like, if you could, for I guess the audience, what is the one thing? But minus being real that you like kind of want to talk about what's like something that you always encounter uh, minus politics today about like people talking about things like with your friends or just small talk at the gym. Like what's what's something that kind of comes to mind for that? 
I mean, I'm going to have to go a little bit deeper and I'm going to have to go with, um, just relationships. Yeah. Yeah. Like whether it's like a significant other, your mom, your, your dad, like whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, I, and I'm sure a lot of other people probably struggle with like the, um, the fight or flight. Right. And so that's big for me because I have talked to many of my friends who experienced the same thing. And so I, me trying to work through that with you even because it comes up for me. Mm-hmm. That's It's like a big thing right. because it starts off – I would bet money it starts off in like childhood. Yeah. Like, like certain like, yeah. you know. Wounds, experiences. Trauma that happens. Mm-hmm. And yeah. so your your response is like fight or flight, right? Mm-hmm. And um, that's always been like a big thing for me. And, and I forgot to mention whenever you asked me to tell about myself. I should have mentioned I was divorced. I should have mentioned that. People probably pick that up. But – right. Divorce, but I say that because that kind of brings baggage to the relationship as well for us. And, um, and yeah, I don't know. I just think like, you know, now that we're together, I have like this newfound respect for marriage and I don't have, well, I mean, I still struggle with like the fight or flight sometimes, like I tell Mm -hmm. you that. Um, but now it's more of like a fight, like, Mm -hmm. you know, I want to choose you every day and, and that takes work sometimes. Thank you. <laughs> it takes work sometimes whenever it's like not, you know, you're not having like the best of days or mm-hmm. whatever, you know? Um, so I think like just to sum that up, just relationships. Mm-hmm. Like I think it's it's really important to have good relationships in your life and good people in your life. And So I'm going to ask you a question. I, and I, I know the answer or else I think I know the answer. And it's the same answer I have. Am like, I in the hot seat right now? I think you're in the hot seat. Is it hot? It's warm. Is it warm? I'm sweating. Okay. I am too, because you're <laughs> freaking gorgeous. Um, what do you think is different about us? Like, what what do you think is, like, our, our foundation? Like, do you think we had a good foundation before we, you know, did our vows and all that stuff? Absolutely. Yeah. You're my best friend. Right. Like, you're my best friend. You could say that a thousand more times. It would never get old. Well, and... I mean, don't do it, because they'll get annoyed. Say, they would get very annoyed. <laughs> Um, but that's what it comes down to is you are my best friend. Like if we, if we weren't married, if we weren't together, I don't know if you feel the same way, but I always tell my friends, if Eddie and I were not together, he would still be my best friend. I don't know how that would work, but mm-hmm. like, we're not going to go there though. No, we're going to just stay together. No, for sure. But I think it was just like the, the foundation of the friendship and there wasn't anything there. It was just platonic. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe we both. We both maybe subconsciously knew something was there, but mm-hmm. we didn't like act on it. Right. We kind of kept it G-rated, if you will, mm-hmm. for a while. And which is so weird for for me. Like I've <clears> never <throat> done that my entire life. Like God, honest truth, you can call me a pig, whatever it is. But that's the realism of it. I've never done that. I've never d- gone years just being a friend with a female, never kissed her, held hands, or anything like that. I've never done that. So you always go back to like we are, we are Christians. We are. Um, we we do we do everything we can to put God first. Does it mean we do it all the time? Absolutely not. But we do do our best. I will I will say that. I mean, could we do better? Yes. Uh, but it goes to show, like, don't have sex before marriage, um, and look what happened when we had a relationship. Like we had that good solid foundation. All the things that you've heard, like growing up, like don't do this, don't do that. Like you want to have this. It kind of made sense. Like yeah. At, how old were 40, 43? You're 43, honey. Gosh. But yeah, I was 43 when we got married. No, it's 42. You were too. 42. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's crazy. And it feels totally different than I'm divorced as well, times two. So um, yeah, it feels totally different, like totally different. And I'm not saying this because you're my wife now and sitting right here. I think, you know, that I'd be very honest with you. Like, Hey babe, we got some issues. Like this isn't working. I'm, Pretty transparent. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Maybe too transparent sometimes? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yep. I think that's better than lying, right? Anything's better than lying. Right, that's true. Yeah, we don't want to lie. We want to we wanna be open. So, um, so yeah, to answer your question, I, I think the, the friendship piece is probably the most important besides putting God first. Mm-hmm. So, and, I, and I've never done that in any of my relationships. I did not do that in my past marriage. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he was not my best friend. I didn't try. I didn't put forth the effort. Um, and with you, it's just like a totally different story. You know, I think I've learned a few lessons along the way and, um, yeah, friendship is very important. 
It is for sure. Definitely. Can you lift up your sleeve and show me your new tattoo? It's so really cool looking. It's so cool. Like I was just looking at like, look how hot it is, like sticking out. So we have, okay. so we, we love tattoos. Obviously <laughs> we're like always alternating who goes sees our, uh, our tattoo artist, Zach. So she's kind of like me bouncing around the place, little ADD. You wanted a half sleeve. Right. You thought about a full sleeve. Right. You want to get your, a calf tattoo. Right. So what's next? Or do you still not know? I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. I think you should finish the sleeve. I mean, that'd be great. But I think like, it's kind of like if I go ahead and start here, mm -hmm. I got to commit to finishing well, it. Well, you, you started know? right there. So, so you... that's a great point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I'll probably. I'm gonna ask Zach what he says. He's gonna want to finish it for the sake of the podcast. Can we call him Zachariah? Sure. Okay. Why? Why Zachariah? Oh, no. Okay, that's weird. Sounded cool. Anyway, his name's Zach Ranch. He's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he is amazing. He is amazing. Was it he Lost Veil? Vale? Lost Veil vale tattoo. Lost yeah. Veil. Vale. Yeah. Lost Veil vale tattoo in Waxahachie. In Waxahachie, Texas, because that's where we are. We're in our living room by the or our sitting room, which is such a. <laughs> There's rooms that are in houses, like random no rooms. rooms. Yeah, like sitting room. You're di like no one ever uses it. No one it. goes there to sit. So we we made a podcast room. There used to be mats, so we could do the kids and I could we could go we could fight each other. Or I'm so glad that's out of here, by the way. Or we would use it for stretching sometimes. <sighs> but now now there's this this room. That's Which I have to give props to Sabrina because she helped with like the whole true putting so, it together. Okay, so all right, mm -hmm. so when we did this podcast, we kind of split up jobs. Right? Yes. I did the interior design. You're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> you did the interior design. I did the design. And then yeah. I did the tech part. Yours went way smoother <laughs> than mine did. Mine I, was done like day one and yeah. you took a minute. Yeah. So if you guys have been like following the, this channel or whatever or Instagram or Facebook, we put out weeks ago that we were going to do our first episode and... <laughs> Man, the tech stuff kicked my butt. I had a hard time. I mean, it's confusing as I mean, well. Like, it, if it was you look good. At it was that. just the settings on the computer, and so we had to call somebody that actually, another Zach, that actually knows what he's doing and get this thing whole set up. So now I just open one little file, and we got it's all set up, and we can start recording, and then we're good to go. So much nicer. Because man, how many times did I set this this whole stuff up okay. trying to figure it out? I honestly thought you were going to jump through a window. Either, yes. either you were going to jump through a window or I was trying to get away from you. Or, or the computer was. Or the, or, computer or the, was or the camera the or something else. Something was going to happen. It wasn't going to be good. That's all I knew. I guess the, uh, the thing that I learned is like when you know you don't understand something, feel free to reach out to someone who does. But I also was like, okay, this is a challenge. I've never done this stuff before. I kind of want to do it. I mean, we ordered the right stuff. We got the right gear. Yeah. So that's good. So we did that. Yeah. It's great. I mean, you it got, looks you great. This, this sign right here. Yeah. It was put good. these curtains up. We put those job. wood panels up on the wall. Yeah. It looks good. The like wall. you did a really good job. I did Thanks. the wood panels though. You did do the wood panels. Yeah. I picked them out. Yeah, you did. You did. And when we take them off and we sell this house, it's going to pull all the paint off. <laughs> and then we're going to have to repaint, which is just another task we're going to do. I think it looks great. Yeah, I'm into it. Does. It. it does look I'm good. I'm here for it. It's awesome. So what are some topics that we can cover? We're definitely going to cover relationships. Relationships. Marriage. Faith. I want to talk about faith, too. We're definitely going to talk about People faith. People are afraid to talk about faith. Oh, They're I have like, a story about that. Yeah? Well, we'll have to dive deep in another. Okay, so that's another one? Another right. one, yeah. People are afraid to talk about faith. They're like, oh, it, it labels me. Cool. Sweet. You follow God. Right. That's awesome. Right. And everyone kind of makes it. I, I, I was talking to, I did one of my one-on-one -on -one calls yesterday? This morning. Was it this morning? Mm -hmm. Okay. And we were taught, and he, he's like, "Hey, one thing that you said that really stuck out to me is like you compared, and I can't take credit for this. It's one of the wild, wild at hearts I mm -hmm. went with John Eldridge. He talks about like, and I was the same way. Like talking about Christians as they're like Mister Rogers, like they're just like put on their little loafers, little sweater vest, mm -hmm. you know, sit, have some tea, you know, mm -hmm. talk very, very softly. But that's that's not what John Eldridge says. He's like, you need to look at it as like you're more like a fierce warrior, like uh, William Wallace or Mel Gibson and Braveheart." Or Russell Crowe, great, uh, great movie in uh, Gladiator, and if you think about it, every day we are we when you we wake up, some of us wake up a lot faster than others, right? Not right, babe. And you put your feet down, like your your day starts, but that day is almost like a battle. It's like you, you got to deal with the kids, you got to deal with your job, like that's your battlefield, like mm -hmm. the emotions, the traffic, 
Mm-hmm. Uh, everything people at people you. at the gym, everything yeah, everything's yeah. testing you. Yeah, and so I think that kind of goes into is like if you look at it as more of like a warrior instead of like a a timid and meek and mild, like that ain't that or ain't anxious. that's not what we're called to be. That's yeah. what we're called to be. So it'd be cool to dive into that. Um, and then we talked to we went out to dinner with a friend um, the other night, right? Mm-hmm. And talk about emotional intelligence, mm-hmm. which is huge for military guys, like because we. We get out, which we're going to discuss all this. Oh, stuff. We're going to dive deep. We're into diving deep into a lot of stuff. We got a lot of stuff. So about. important, like the mental health. I t- you know what? Let's go back for just a second. You asked me what I wanted to talk about. What's important to me, mm-hmm. right? And I said relationships, but I want to add to that if I can. Is the mental health aspect that which, is like which right so now guys listening are like mental health, like really? Because yeah. I used to be that mm-hmm. guy, but it's so good. It's so important. Yeah, to be self aware and to know like you know, triggers or your trauma or all of that. I mean, yeah, like to know how to react to a situation and learn from ways that you reacted before that weren't so great. And, mm-hmm. you know, so it's all important. And that it's, it, I, I know a lot of guys that are listening, especially military dudes are like, oh my God, they're, they're afraid of the V word, being vulnerable. All right. Yeah. Dirty minds stop. Uh, yeah, they're afraid to be vulnerable. They don't want to talk about certain things. Like I, I remember when I was with the teams, like you don't show emotion because you got to carry on, carry the Well, yeah, you, you can't. So yeah. But that piles and piles up. And, and when I noticed it, like it, it, it comes out in other ways, like, uh, looking at bad things on the internet, freaking drinking, popping pills, just so you can numb the freaking pain. And it's still going to come. It's still coming. It's, it's still going to come and get you. You just, it's better to, to take it out. But a lot of times, I know at least for me, you don't realize it's happening. You, I mean, you're just like, oh, everyone else is jacked up. I'm good to go. Yeah. Uh, but that's not the case, especially now when you kind of come to, to terms with it and kind of accept certain things. It's a lot easier. But yeah, being vulnerable is okay. And I cry. It's cool to cry. It's fine to cry. It's like, I, I can't stand, oh, you cry. or Oh, like, you're not I lo- I macho. I love when you cry. You're not macho. I love when you cry. I'm, and what I used to say all the time, sorry, I'm crying. You did. Sorry, I'm crying. You would apologize for crying. I'm like, dude, you. Well, not you. I wasn't, I wasn't used to it. I'm like, you just scored like a hundred more hot points for crying. Ladies know what I mean. I'll cry right now. I can't cry right now. We did cry today. We did cry today. What? That's you right. Tell them why? That's right. We just if some of you guys would follow um, a book. We just we, we we wrote a book, and it just came back from DOD, which has to get approved by the Department of Defense to make sure there's no. Uh, confidential information and it finally came back and we sent it to our final for one of the final rounds of edit and our publisher and they wanted to beef up the last chapter and we just started reading the last chapter together and which talks about a lot about us like us meeting and that's kind of like the grand finale i don't want to give away too much but we just started crying like i started crying i was reading out loud like on the computer and she was looking over my shoulder, and I was like, I got to stop. So she starts reading. We had to take turns. And then you started crying. And then <laughs> I went. I started crying. It just like boom, boom, back and forth. So it, that's good. I mean, I, I, that was kind of like the take. Uh, I mean, there's there's war. There's parenting. There's faith. There's relationships. relationships. There's a lot of emotional, well, lack thereof of emotional intelligence. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but I think a lot of guys are related. I was very real. I was very intrigued. I, threw, I think I threw myself under the bus. Uh, more than anything that yeah. that whole time because well i deserve it and it's well it's the truth it was it was You're the truth and, transparent uh, yeah i had to be transparent i didn't want to but i think a lot of people are afraid to be transparent they're afraid to voice their opinion can i tell you why go because i know why tell me because when you call it out when you when you say it out loud mm-hmm. it becomes real when you call it when you call its name when you call its name, yep. it becomes real. It's very true. And I think people are so freaking scared to have to face that once they say it, mm-hmm. right? So if they keep it to themselves or if they try to cover it up with alcohol, pills, girls, porn, whatever it is, then then they're just they're just avoiding, right? Mm-hmm. But if you say, okay, like I'm done with all this, like mm-hmm. I'm done with all the bullshit, like I'm ready to face what is really going on with me then you can fix it. You can Mm -hmm. heal. You can choose a healthier route. You can choose God. You can choose, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Instead of all these things that are honestly just going to lead you right back to where you were in the first place. Yeah. It's more like a, it's, it's almost like a mature kind of thing when you, when you just like, that's, that's good. Call it by its name. I like that. That's, that's, that's actually really good. I mean, if you literally, we were talking about this at dinner last night with, um, Beck and Sabrina, Mm -hmm. you know, when you, when you say it out loud, 
like it becomes real. And so a lot of people I think are just afraid to whatever their thing is, if they, you know, have an addiction or if they're wanting to get a divorce or if they're just unhappy in their marriage or their relationship or, you know, their kid has autism and they just don't want to, they don't want to face it. It's like, it's, Mm -hmm. they can kind of keep playing the game and have this facade until they finally like label it, right? Mm -hmm. Like give it a name and then, you know, Mm -hmm. navigate that. I think a lot of people too are embarrassed by their situation or embarrassed by some personal traits. But the thing that people also don't understand is there's only one of them. Yeah. So, like, we all have issues. Mm -hmm. You have issues. I have issues. Mm -hmm. The next door neighbor has certain type of issues. They might be all be different. So it's just kind of like it's. But but every person's so unique. I remember I was talking to that guy uh, on the one on one call. I was like, dude, there's there's no one like you. Like there is no one like you because he wanted to reach um, people and kind of just share his faith. And I was like, man, you're going to be reaching people. I can't reach. And yeah. just like, I'll reach people that you can't reach. Like military guys are going to want to go with listen to another military guy where a drug addict, for example, is going to want to listen to a guy that's been there, done that, it's turned his life around recovery. like that. Of course, that's mm-hmm. who you're going to listen to. Yeah. I mean, I mean, that's, that's a no brainer, but so there's, there's definitely a calling for everyone for sure. I mean, Absolutely. So, and that what they say? If you want to be successful, you have to hang around successful people. I think they say what they say. The top five. Yeah. You can do the six or seven. (laughs) If you want to be do extra credit. Extra credit. So you want to do anything? I mean, I know we're we're kind of bounced around for everything all around, but we've got a lot to talk about. I think we'll be more, or we will be more like on topic for these things. But we kind of just wanted to get it out, get a little discussion, introduce ourselves to the audience. Mm I think we did that. Do you think there's anything you think we're missing or? I don't think so. You don't think so? What do you think for your first? This is our first podcast, by the way. First podcast. First podcast. Ever. She rocked so it, you're dude. You're like the pro and I'm like, you know. Just I'm definitely not the pro. The baby. beginner. You did awesome. Thanks. How, does that, how did it feel? Pretty natural? Natural because I can talk to you about anything and everything. It's just like a normal conversation. Right. Does it feel weird with like the camera and everything or no? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it doesn't. It's pretty normal. Are we good? We're great. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We will be, we are going to hold each other accountable to sit in these chairs Mm -hmm. and do more podcasts. I don't know how often I would say, I'd say probably bi-weekly right now. What do you, what do you think? I think that's a good, yeah. So it's a good goal. So you'll, you'll see us in about two weeks, uh, two to three weeks after we send it to our, our, our guy that does all the video stuff for us and gets it to where it needs to be. So. And we'll have one topic we talk about. We'll have one topic. We'll, we'll, we'll try to do that. We'll probably go off we, on a yeah, tangent. We, we, we always detour, tangent. man. Yeah, it's, but... a, it's okay. It's all, it's all good. So, all right. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> good job, babe.